Remember the last time a cold went around your office? Has it ever bothered you that some people get completely wiped out, where others just get the sniffles? Everyone gets sick at a different rate. Well, the same is true with HIV. HIV is a virus that attacks and destroys the immune system. And when you can no longer defend yourself against infection, you're considered to have AIDS, which untreated leads to death. But there's a huge variation in how quickly people with HIV progress to AIDS. Some people get AIDS in as little as two to three years, whereas others can remain AIDS-free for over 10 years. We can get a pretty good idea of how quickly someone with HIV will progress to AIDS by looking at the amount of virus in their blood, known as their viral load. If you have a low viral load, then the disease will have a slower progression and you'll have a longer time before you get AIDS. But if you have a high viral load, the disease will progress more rapidly and you'll get AIDS sooner. But what's responsible for the huge variation we see in viral load that leads to these big differences in how quickly people get AIDS? Is it because of environmental effects, like diet and health? Is it because of the effects of a particular person, like their age, ethnicity, or immune system? Or is it because of the effects of the particular type of virus that they've been infected with? Or in other words, do some strains of HIV make people sick more quickly than others? This is an important question, because if the virus has a strong control over viral load, then it's possible that a more virulent strain of HIV could appear and spread through the population, perhaps even becoming more deadly. In my PhD, I've investigated this question by developing a brand new method that allows me to look at 8,500 sequences from HIV-positive individuals across the UK. When you look at a family tree, you can tell how everyone in it is related, and I can create a family tree of HIV, known as a phylogeny. This allows me to look at how similar or different the viral loads are in sequences that are more closely or distantly related. Then I can estimate exactly what effect each type of HIV has on the viral load. Using this new method that's allowed me to analyze more data than any previous analysis, I've estimated that only 6% of the viral load is determined by the virus itself. This very small number means that other things like age, ethnicity, and immune system are much more important for determining your viral load than the particular type of virus you've been infected with. So, do some strains of HIV make people sick more quickly than others? In the UK HIV epidemic, the answer is no.